Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Linux Mint 20.3 has hit the field, as it were, and today we are going to have a brief look at this distribution. There's a few things in here that are really nice, and once again, they demonstrate a commitment to user choice by the one big thing that they did is change around some of the themes, but for those people that still want the old style of themes, they are still available. Available. And I'm going to show you where you can grab those and uh, the information from that. And so what we're going to do, let's first go ahead and, and uh, have a look at what is, uh, what is new with Linux Mint. And then we'll actually head on over to the distribution and have a look at that in real time. So, of course, uh, this would apply to all of the different distributions. We have the Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE versions. Of course, the next one they're working on is the Linux Mint 5, uh, uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition 5, um, based on the latest Debian, which is always comes out after they do their, um, usually it's their dot .3 release. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at what the website looks like. And um, so it is released. There's some new features, and uh, there's a lot of things in here that are that are pretty good. Now there uh, there are some upgrade instructions. If you're using a previous version, there is a specific guide linked to the blog. And uh, if you're running the beta, it will automatically um, uh, upgrade. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with it for, um, I'm going to give it about a week or two. Uh, this is always standard practice. I never jump to a brand new distribution the day of. But I'm going to give it a week or two, and then I'm going to upgrade my laptop first, play around with that for a little bit, and then I'll upgrade the uh, system here that we are recording on. Uh I'm curious to see if it resolves a few of the issues with like VirtualBox and things like that. Now I am running this in VirtualBox uh, because I wanted to see if it would actually upgrade itself and it took a while, but it did actually successfully upgrade in VirtualBox. That is the issue that, uh, that's why I did the video on GNOME boxes the other day because VirtualBox uh, in Linux Mint here has been a little wonky uh, as far as some things. It would just freeze on some updates and uh, it just seems to take a while, but that is all resolved on my end now. And um, there is a, uh, we click uh, what's new in the blog post. Uh, we can see what is new. So a lot of these are going to apply to all of the versions. A few of these won't, but um, I generally am just going to look at the Cinnamon version rather than look at all three of them. So Hypnotics is coming along. In my personal opinion, it's not quite on par with where it should be. I'll cover why uh, that is when we actually get there. Um, they have increased uh, some of the some functionality for sure. Uh, it is getting better. It's still not there. They have Thingy now, uh, which is not called Thingy in the menu. Uh, we'll get into that. So maybe we should fix that. Uh, sticky notes, and they have some new updates on sticky notes. Um, improve the ability to embed and uh, do some different highlighting and text and such within the notes. Let me know in the comments if you use sticky notes or not I don't I mean I mean I actually do have a pile of sticky notes on my desk though <laughs> I'm a geek but I like paper uh, it's theme changes this is the one where they want to do some rounded theming changes um, and we'll talk about that a little bit and then uh, they do have some dark mode support and some applications are always dark mode uh, celluloid hypnotics X view pics and gnome terminal so you can do those. And then they made a few other adjustments. Some of the big adjustments that they made as far as the theming is they, they took out the accent colors on absolutely everything um, just because in some places it was a little distracting. And so they did that to make it run a little smoother. You can restore those. Um, and then Cinnamon uh, 5.2 has some calendar implementation, which is pretty good. And uh, manga support. Anybody that likes mangas, uh, there is now proper manga support in X Reader. Um, I'm gonna have my friend upgrade because uh, he reads mangas, and I'm gonna see if uh, how this works. I don't personally, so uh, I'll see. I'll, I'll I'll talk to a manga expert on this in a few weeks. We'll see how that works. 
And then uh, just a few other random adjustments. Web apps is going to tell us what browser. And there's, of course, some new artwork and things like that. And so there we have it, guys. This is LTS until 2025. So if you install it today, you can have three good years of use on it before you need to uh, move on. So with that, let's head on over to the uh, distribution itself and we'll have a look at what we see over there. All right, so we have landed on the desktop. We do have our familiar welcome to Linux Mint. Of course, check your video drivers because we are in a virtual machine. If I was to use this for more things than just doing a brief distro view, I would boot that up and go ahead and install the uh, VirtualBox Guest Edition drivers for video. So they have their first steps, of course, as usual. We can choose our accent color, light theme and dark theme. We can change our panel layout between the traditional and the more modern. System snapshot, shots, driver manager, update manager, all these types of things. Nothing new in here. Now, something that is new, and uh, I'll go ahead and mention it now, the system reports. If you remember, the system reports was added not too long ago, and it's going to check things. Do you have your system backups? If there's any errors and things like this. In order to save on battery power and resources, this, instead of running every hour, now it is only going to run once a day. And so this will actually um, save a little bit of power, and it will not run quite as much. So that's good news. Under our documentation, we do have a launch feature which will launch up the web page that we were looking at earlier to show you what is new. Hopefully, I remember everything as we go through the list. So let's go ahead and start in, and let's go ahead and start with the things that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, hypnotics. Um, this is really coming along. So I think this is a really good thing. I think it is still a work in progress. Of course, we have no movies, no series. Now, that does support a new uh, streaming uh, protocol as well. Is it the stream? Actually, I don't forget. Uh, it's some, one of the streaming protocols. But now we actually can find things in our country a lot easier. So you can find your individual country based on your flag and have a look. Now, I found that some of the things in here will load up directly inside the window here and some things will pop up that extra Python box and you pretty much have no control over that thing they have added a few video controls now you can go forward go back pause but you can't do a whole lot else with it and it does still feel a little bit clunky so let's just go ahead and uh, queue up NBC News now I guess because that was the first one I saw and we have some things we have CNN because you know um, and I'm gonna go ahead and pause it for now so you can see that it loaded itself up in a separate Python window uh, and basically it's loading up a Python list I can change the subtitles I can do the audio I can make it full screen things like that so we have a lot of different options we can have with it but there's really nothing else I can do other than just close the window and even that it's not it doesn't close quite nicely so I'll hit it and sometimes it'll just lag out there for a while before it actually closes now some of these will actually load directly inside the window here and so there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy uh, a um, and that some of them will play inside this box and some of them will the load the external company. one and so you can see this there, one is actually what? loading inside the box okay and so this one here, it looks, it, you feel like you have a lot more control over it versus this one here that's still kind of hanging out here. And I told it to close and it's just, it won't die. It's a zombie. <laughs> so I finally just get rid of it by closing the whole hypnotic. So it is a work in progress. It's not quite there yet. Um, but yeah, whatever that happens to be. I think it's m making a lot of positive strides, um, but maybe it should be beta or something like that. Let's talk briefly about the new theming options here. Um, so this is where uh, you have a little bit lower on the on the accents here. So things actually I like overall. I like the theming, except one of the things that does kind of drive me a little crazy is they put in they made these a little bit bigger so they're easy to use, I'll modernize them, and then put some rounded corners at the top but not at the bottom and it sticks out and I don't like it. There's something about it. I just don't like, but I don't know. Maybe I'm OCD and I really want the bottom. I mean, now, now, 
Now, no, wait, never mind. Um, now, if you do want to use the um, the older style themes, they are still available, although they're not on the system by default. So if we head on into our themes, and you can see here's the Mint, uh, Mint X, here's the Mint Y, here's what the X looks like, here's the Y. Um, and then here's uh, the options we have. We have the Y, we have the Y dark and things like that. Now, if you want the older style themes, they are still available, but in order to not have about a thousand things in this menu, they're not installed by default. It is now called Mint Y Legacy. And uh, just for the purpose of uh, illustrating it to you, um, I'm going to boot up Synaptic here. And if you just boot up Synaptic and do a search for Legacy... Of course, there's a lot of things that will pop up in the list, but if we scroll on down here to Mint Y Legacy, here's it's Mint Themes Legacy. So installing this package is going to restore the older themes if you're not into the newer ones. Um, this doesn't bother me much, so I would keep that, but actually I use my own themes on my production system anyway, so uh, that's actually okay. It's uh, whatever, um, but that's actually pretty good. Um, now we talked about they had the thingy and the thingy is actually in the menu called library. Even if you search for thingy, it shows up as library in here. This is actually what the, the application is. And what the idea with this is, is it's basically going to give you a readable history of the documents you've read and the positions you were. So if you are reading ebooks, for example, and remember XReader can read EPUBs. So if you have an, an offline ebook library, you can read it on Linux Mint without any extra tools. And it actually works well. Well, this is actually now going to keep a copy of all of those items in here so you can actually save and check on your status. It is called library in the menu, not thingy. So look for it there if you are looking for it. Uh, and then the web apps application, remember this is kind of like the ICE applications, they added an extra column so you can see what is the default browser. So if you remember, you can enter your name, your address, add an icon, put it in the category, and then you can choose your browser. We only have Firefox installed right now. You can do Firefox, Chromium, Vivaldi, um, and there's going to be some other browsers that will be supported there as well. But you can also say it's opening in a private incognito window. You can give it a navigation bar or not. Uh, but you, now you can see in the basic listing if there are um, more items there. And most of the other things that we see are fairly standard, just your basic updates. The one other item I would like to indicate, and this is actually, in my opinion, really big and a good direction. Those of you that use online calendars. So if you just head on over to your online accounts and uh, you add in whatever your online account says, and I'm not going to open it up right now because it could expose some details. It saves me some time editing the video later. Simply add your online accounts. In this case, I added Nextcloud. Um, and when I add my Nextcloud account, I can just open this guy up and it's going to give us our um, network over here. And that's fairly obscured, so I'm not concerned about that part. That's my Nextcloud account. So I can click on this and it'll just load this up. It'll, um, uh, it'll mount the folder and now I can directly use my Nextcloud in here. So with the next cloud account working, we can see how it works there. But the other thing that they did is down here in the calendar app, you can see that little dot on 13. Well, that is an item that is on my calendar. And if I just click this date, I'm going to see what I have. And I went into my next cloud account and on a different computer, by, by the way, I added a, a uh, event calendar onto my calendar itself. And now if I just, uh, I can pull that up, I can see it and then I can pull this guy up and then it will actually pull up the calendar itself on the basic uh, native calendar app. So those of you who use managed calendars and things with Nextcloud, this should work with Google accounts. It should work with Microsoft accounts. I don't have indication why it wouldn't, uh, but in my case, I'm using Nextcloud. Um, it completely syncs directly in with the system, and I can quickly spot any uh, uh, days where things are open or not open directly on my calendar down here. So that is actually a total 
totally awesome improvement, uh, demonstrating once again they are moving in right directions. There's nothing else in here that is out of the ordinary. Um, you know, everything else is retained how it has been from the past. But I think that this is a good step in the right direction. I'm just going to give it about a week to work out any bugs that might show up. And then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to install it, as I said, on my laptop first, play around with it for a week. Uh, I'm going to test to see if it improve my battery life. That'd be a good thing to know. And then we'll go ahead and roll it out to my main production machine a couple weeks after I have tested it from there. So Linux Mint 20.3 is out. If you're looking for a brand new Linux uh, install, Linux Mint install, 23 would be a good logical place to go. It's not like a brand, brand new version. You know, it's not the 20.0, which I would say give that one an extra month to work out bugs. This is just an upgrade to the 20 series, so it's going to be very good. It's going to be polished out of the gate, but just, again, give it a couple days to get some of those bugs out. Particularly if you're using online calendars, lots of forward direction where we need to go. They are bringing things in to a little bit more modern look with the new theming styles, although I wish they rounded the bottom of the corners too. Um, but anyway, that is that. So with that, guys, thanks for watching, and we will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.